Hello and welcome to our webinar. Today we're going to be talking about our C1M1 dual path alarm communicators, which provide fast, reliable alarm reporting and secure hassle-free remote access. My name is Amy Strickland. I am with Elk Products Marketing and Tech Support Departments. Joining me today is Brad Weeks, who is the manager of our tech support department here at Elk Products. We're going to be spending a little time today introducing you to our C1M1 communicators. Um, these communicators have been on the market for a while, but we did just recently release an LTE version for Verizon Networks. Um, so we're, you know, taking this opportunity to um, go back through this product and tell you a little bit about, you know, what it is, what it does, and then give you some information as far as working with the product, um, you know, some aspects of the product itself, um, getting things set up, the different uh, activation processes and talking with you a little bit about some of the remote options it provides. So throughout the webinar, if you have questions, we certainly encourage you to ask those questions. Um, there is a, a question section of your go-to webinar control panel on your screen. Um, you can use that to type your questions into us. Um, we will get as, to as many of those questions as we can throughout the session. Um, if for whatever reason we're not able to answer your question, perhaps we're short on time or maybe your question is a bit more involved and we need to provide a follow-up answer to you, we will do that um, promptly after the webinar. You should receive that follow-up uh, no later than tomorrow. Um, in that email that we send with the follow-up, we're going to provide a copy of the presentation you're seeing today, a link to a recording of this webinar, and some other resources that you may find helpful. So one of the main aspects about the C1M1 that makes it a bit different from some other communicators on the market is just the, the speed in which it's able to transmit messages. And when we're talking about alarm messages, whether it be for a fire or a medical emergency or even for a burglary type situation, you want to get that emergency message to the central station as quickly as possible um, in order to um, save lives and assets. And so that's one of the key things with C1M1 is that speed. C1M1 uses both IP and cellular pathways. It significantly reduces transmission time and it simplifies setup for remote access. And we're going to dive into each one of those topics a little bit more in detail as we go on. Right now we offer two different models of C1M1. Um, as I said before, we now offer the C1M1 LTE-V, which supports the Verizon LTE cellular network. And we do also offer a GSM version, which is the C1M1 for GSM, and that is for AT&T and T-Mobile cellular networks. So depending on where you are, what your coverage is like, you're going to want to select the unit that is going to provide the best cellular signal for you. And um, even you know, from as an installer, that may change from instant installation to installation. So you want to keep in mind that you do have these two options available and make sure that you, you know, do those testing um, steps for finding out what kind of cellular service you have on the different networks. So C1M1 provides full data communication to your central station and it's able to do that over both IP and cellular pathways. Um, it's able to determine which pathway is the best pathway to send the communication. Um, it's going to typically prefer IP um, and use cellular as a backup, but because it's able to monitor both the network and internet connectivity as well as the cellular signal, it's able to pick the best pathway at the time that the transmission needs to go through. When you send periodic tests through the system, you're going to get those tests through both pathways, which is going to help you assure that both pathways are working. And um, there are some other features that um, allow the communication to be reliable. The transmission speed of those emergency messages is, you know, again, quite fast when you, you know, are, are working with the product and you see, you know, 
from the event occurring to when you see it on your central station um, log is, is very quick. And so um, we're able to do that by eliminating things like dial capture and data bus decoding um, and uh, you know li eliminating cloud servers. And we also have a direct connection between this communicator and the M1 um, control. So you know through those things we're able to really trim down the time that it takes to get the, the message to the central station. We also wanted to simplify how um, you set up remote access. Um, we wanted to eliminate things like port forwarding so that you're not necessarily having to get into the person's network or access their router in order to get this thing going. Um, we also wanted to uh, make it easy for you as far as fees are concerned. So you're not going to have any extra fees associated with remote access to the system. Um, you're, the only fees that you're going to see with C1M1 are related to just the cellular service, which is through TailGuard. For installers, C1M1 provides a pathway for remote programming um, through the LCRP software. And that can be done over the IP pathway, and when needed, it can also be done over the cellular pathway. Um, we also have a portal um, for installers, um, the LCLINK portal, and this is how you're going to be able to activate and view and manage all the C1M1 communicators you have on LCLINK. For your end consumer, C1M1 is going to provide you a pathway for remote control and also provide some notifications. Um, so you're going to be able to, um, from our Elklink mobile app, which is a free app that you can download, you do be able to do things like arm and disarm the system, um, check this current status, view recent events, that sort of thing. And that's all, again, just a free app for both iOS and Android. Um, a very simple app, making it very easy to use. Um, so this is a good option for those customers that are looking for some remote control capability but don't necessarily need all of the bells and whistles of a full featured app. C1M1 also allows email and text message alerts to the customer so that they can know if the system is armed, disarmed, or if there's an alarm event. And the customer is able to actually manage that notification feature on their own through the end user portal um, for ElkLink. And again, just talking a little bit more about the app, um, again, it is for iOS and Android. Um, you're going to be able to do things like arm and disarm. You can silence and acknowledge alarms. Um, you can view recent events. And it does also support push notifications to your device for notifications as well. So now that I've kind of given you an idea of what C1M1 is and just given you an overview of the product, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Brad now, who is going to spend some time going over some of the features of the product and steps that you need for activation and programming. All right. Thank you, Amy. We certainly do appreciate that. And we want to thank everyone for taking time today to spend some time with us to go over the C1M1, our dual path communicators. We're going to talk a little about the installation, the activation, and the programming of the units. All right, so some key features of the C1M1. First of all, we have this screw-in antenna, and this is a stubby antenna that's included. A remote antennas are available if you happen to have poor signal strength. Each unit has a seven-segment display and this provides signal strength, uh, communication activity, error codes, and some other diagnostic information. There are LEDs on the bottom of the uh, housing which show connectivity, cell service, LAN, and elk link communication. It's a small, compact housing. It's designed to fit inside the elk structured wiring enclosures. The bottom of the unit, we see the 12 volt DC power input. Now this is supplied by the M1's auxiliary power or you could use a separate power supply. The uh, mini RS-232 connector there, that connects to the M1's serial port and we do include the cable for that. The LAN connection and a USB mini B port for uh, connection to your PC for programming and diagnostics and so forth. So the steps necessary to set up a C1M1, first we need a TailGuard account, we need an ElkLink account, 
It's always a good idea to check the cellular signal strength in the proposed mounting area, the physical connection and mounting of the C1M1, and then we have our registration and activation through TailGuard and ElkLink, and then some programming through the RP software, and finally sending test signals to verify the communications going through. So we have been able to partner with TailGuard to provide the cellular service set up and billing for the C1M1 communicator. You must have a TailGuard online account, deal, uh, act, uh, account in order to activate a C1, yeah, C1M1. So if you already have an existing TailGuard account, that's great. You can use your existing account and simply contact their support team and ask to, the ELK tap rate to be added to your plan. If you don't have a current TailGuard account, that's no problem. You can complete the online dealer sign up and get your TailGuard account. And then once again, make sure you request the ELK tap rate plan. ElkLink account setup, very simple. We'll email you the account in for uh, setup information there. Those are usually taken care of within one to two business days. You will need your TailGuard account ID number. That is required for approval for an ElkLink account application. You also need to contact your central station and get the IP and the port information for their SureGuard IP receiver. The C1M1 will only report to a SureGuard receiver. So once you get that information completed, you can send that in, submit that at accounts at elklink.com and we'll get that information processed for you. Testing the cellular signal is very important. You always want to make sure we have a, a good cell service in the area for the proposed mounting for the C1M1. And we would really recommend seeing two bars of service in the area. Now, there are several methods for testing for cellular signal. You can temporarily power up the C1M1 and hold it in close proximity to where it's going to be mounted. And you'll get an indication through that seven-segment display of the bars of service. It'll, it'll have a B, lowercase b, for bars, and then a number indicating the bars of service. You can also use your cell phone or your smartphone held in that same close proximity to monitor the cell service. Now, important to remember that depending on your cell phone network will determine whether or not you need to use the C1 M1 4 GSM or the M1 LTEV version. So depending on which service is stronger in your area, you'll need to determine which uh, model to use there. If you do happen to have a weak signal strength, we do offer remote antenna, which should help improve the signal. Uh, we offer the ELK WA003. This is a six meter antenna. It comes with a magnetic base and has the SMA mail connector. So that can be used in, to replace the stubby antenna on the C1M1. Hookup is very simple. Uh, there's a 12 volt DC power input on the bottom of the C1M1 and you can connect that to the auxiliary, the VOX terminal on the M1 or you could use a secondary power supply if you would like. Then there's the connection from the RS-232 from the M1 to the C1M1 and that is included. This cable between the M1 and the C1M1 cannot be extended. So the cable included with the unit is the one that you should use. And then there's the network connection to your router. The C1M1 mounts very neatly into the ELK SWB14 or the SWB28 enclosure. There's a knockout in the top of the enclosure for the antenna. There's a single screw that will allow the unit to be hung on the side of the enclosure. And then the zip tie here at the bottom holds it secure.
TailGuard registration is very simple. Once you have your TailGuard account set up, you'll log into their website. You will go under subscribers and units and register subscriber. You will then enter the serial number of the C1M1 and that is located on the side of the unit. And then once that information is entered, you'll hit validate. Once the unit has been validated, then you can enter the customer's information, address and so forth. The client account number, we would highly recommend you use the same number that your central station gives you for the central station reporting. And then the rate plan, remember it's the ELK TAP rate plan that you'll need to select there. Once it's registered on TailGuard, we can log in to ELK link, click new, Enter the MAC and the PIN number, which is found also on the side of the unit. Enter the system name, and that's basically whatever you want to call it to distinguish this C1M1 from another one. Enter the reporting account number given to you by your central station. Set the heartbeat interval. Only if central station accepts this option, they will provide that information for you. Once this information is entered, we will click Authenticate Device. After the authentication is complete, click Confirm Activation to initiate communication with the M1. C1 M1, I'm sorry, C1 M1. All right, once it's authenticated, we now go under RP and under Telephones. So you must have one telephone number programmed in this, the M1. So for telephone number one, uh, enter the central station name, that's optional. The reporting format will be six for IP. Then select the desired categories that you want to report. Uh, it's always a good idea to have the first and the last, the area events, and then the globals. Those are usually always selected. The middle three are optional, but there's no harm in having them checked prior and then select the area. Very important to select the area that's going to be reported. Once your telephone number is configured, then go under Communicator. There on the left-hand side, click on Communicator. Go under Zone RCs, and under Zone RCs, you'll see four columns. The Alarm, the Restoral, the Bypass, and the Trouble. Entering a 0, 1 in the pulse column enables that reporting code. If it's a 0, 0, it means it's disabled. It's not going to report that alarm condition. So alarm pulse, very important. Make sure that's set to 0, 1. The other three columns are optional if you want those reported. We highly recommend that you set up a periodic test to send the central station. That that's done, also done under Communicator, under System RCs. In the gray area at the top, we're going to automatically test the Communicator. And you can set this from one day all the way up to 255 days. So whatever your central station would recommend or whatever you feel comfortable doing, either one day, five days, seven days, 30 days, it's up to you. The time of day it's going to be sent and the automatic test pulse value here needs to be 0, 1. Once this is sent to the system, we can initiate a test through the keypad, or we can wait the one, seven days, whatever you have set up. Now the test goes out over both pathways. So when it does the periodic test, it's testing both the IP and the cellular pathway. So your central station will receive two events. And these are the steps to do keypad if we want to send that test anytime, if you're on site and just want to send a test signal. We can certainly do so by entering into keypad programming, menu 8, system settings. We go to 84, system test, then three communicators, send test silent, 
uh, send test, and we're going to send this test silently. And your central station will send, uh, receive an E602 for the IP reporting. They will receive an E603 for cellular. Okay, so once we have this uh, unit configured and it's communicating to central station, you can always go back in and edit information under the LClink installer portal. So once you've logged in, we can go under devices. You can locate the device by its MAC address. Double click on it to expand it open. And then if you need to edit information, you would click the edit device button at the bottom of the new screen. And that allows you to edit things like the central station account number and so forth. Right. In order for the um, the apps to work, we need a remote disarming code to be entered under the ElkLink portal. So here we have the remote disarm code. Now this is our default code, 3456, but you can certainly change this. And we would recommend you do change it to a, to a different disarm code. What we would suggest is in ElkRP, create user 199 and then give it its four-digit code. 199 is is high up in the list, so there shouldn't be any um, accidental erasing of this or accidental changing of this because it is so far up in the list. So we can set up user 199, give them their four-digit uh, arm disarm code. Once that's uh, sent to the M1, now the the app should be able to arm and disarm, and it'll log that as user 199. All right, so now it's time to set up our customer account. So under the portal, we go under End Customer. Well, I'm sorry, first we go to the Admin tab, then click End Customer. We'll click New to add a new customer. Enter the required information for each field there, their name, email address, mobile carrier, and so forth. The end user will receive an email notification so that they can set up their own username and password to the ElkLink portal. So they too can log in. They won't see the same information as you do. They'll have their own portal, which will allow them from their computer to arm and disarm. They can also check the log. They can then set up the text or email notification. So that was something that, uh, that no longer has to be managed by the installer. The end user now has uh, control over that. So once they have their login, they log into their C1, M1 account there. And under the address book and notification, they add their new contacts. After adding the contacts, they can go to the rules page in which time they can set up what gets sent. They can either have just alarms or just arming and disarming or all three. So it's totally customizable to them. They can set up 10 separate notifications or, or 10 separate addresses rather so they could have that message go out to 10 separate devices if they so choose. Right. We actually have two communicators that do IP reporting. We have the C1M1 which is our dual path. It does both IP and cellular and then we have the XEP unit which does just IP reporting. So we've given you kind of a little breakdown between the two here, uh, showing some of the features of each one. So reporting, uh, C1M1 does both, while the XEP only does IP reporting. Remote programming with the RP software can be done IP and cellularly with the C1M1, but only IP with the XEP module. The apps, for the most part, the apps will work either way with C1M1 or the XEP, with the exception of the M1 
uh, I'm sorry, M1 to go. That's our free PC-based app. That is uh, XEP only at this time. Notifications, our email notifications for the C1 M1 can be configured by the end user. With the XEP, it can have up to 16 messages, but the installer would have to configure that ahead of time for the customer. We're very fortunate that the Elk M1 can be integrated with so many different partner manufacturers. And here's just a list of a few of those. Now, some of those require direct serial connection. Some require local area network connection. With the C1M1, you can still have control of your AMX, Control 4, Crestron, and so forth using the C1M1 on the local area network. We do offer the C1M1 configuration utility. Now this utility is used to configure inbound port settings. It also enables an auto discovery feature for AMX and Control 4. So if you are planning that integration for AMX and Control 4, you'll certainly need the C1M1 utility. You can change the tamper switch settings for the unit. There is a tamper switch on the front cover and that can be set to front cover only or totally disabled. The utility allows you to connect directly to the to the C1M1 using a mini B cable. And you can request this utility by emailing us at tech support at elkproducts.com. Do we have any questions at this time? Um, yes, we actually have a few questions that we can go through. Um, okay. So the C1M1, you know, we've talked about it being a dual path device, um, but we do have some people asking, can you use it IP only? Can you use it cell only? Well, um, being that it is a dual path device, if, you're, if you have IP only, then I would use the XEP module. It can be set up to do the C1M1 can be set up to be IP or cellular only, but if you're not planning on using both pathways, or if both pathways aren't available, you may need you may want to think about another option. Um, it's really intended to to monitor both, communicate over one or the other, depending if uh, one goes down. Okay, um, so. Another question that we have here is related to that remote disarm code that you were talking about. Um, mm -hmm. um, what happens if that's missing? What's the symptom of that? Uh, you won't be able to disarm through the app. So it's important that on the Elk Link uh, page there, when you're setting up your end customer, that you enter a valid disarm code, arm disarm code. Otherwise, um, they won't be able to arm and disarm through the app. Right, and so that can lead to a scenario where the client has set up their username and password, they've put that into the app and it seems like it's connected, um, but then when you actually try to do something with the app, it doesn't work. So um, exactly. two different uh, you know, authentications there, two different pieces of information that must be provided in order for the app to work fully um, is the username and password for the end customer as well as that um, arm disarm, uh, remote disarm code that you have to put in Elklink. So um, talk a little bit about, um, you know, we talked about the Elklink app a little bit more in, in detail, and again, it's, you know, very basic app, but can you tell us a little bit more about what you can do with some of the other apps that you talked about the, uh, that we saw oh. on that comparison screen? Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, so there are two apps available by integration partners of ours. There's uh, M1 Touch Pro for the Droid platform, and then eKeypad for the iOS platform. These apps both work through the C1M1 or the M1 XEP, and they allow for a more um, detailed integration. You can, you can arm and disarm, check the log, control thermostats, lighting, and so forth, turn on and off outputs, activate the task. So they, it's, it's a more integrated solution 
whereas uh, ElkLink Mobile, it's, uh, it's a free app, it's very basic, arm, disarm, and alarm notifications. So if you're looking for something just basic, ElkLink Mobile will work fine. If you're looking for something that gives you more integration to the system, then uh, consider M1 Touch Pro or eKeypad. Now, those integration partners, apps, uh, there's a one-time charge for those, but there's no monthly charges. Okay. Um, so, as far as the uh, alarm monitoring goes with the C1M1, um, you had mentioned uh, the TailGuard account and that sort of thing. So, um, really, the only requirement for being able to activate a C1M1 unit is going to be having that TailGuard account set up and ha asking them to add the ELK tap rate, um, as well as having an ELK link account set up so that you can complete activation. Um, TailGuard's uh, account set up if you don't already have one it is an online link which we'll provide in the follow-up and then we have an account application that you complete um, and submit to ELK in order to set up the ELK link account and we do require your TailGuard account number to set up the ELK link account so be sure to do the TailGuard part first. Right, we, we would really recommend that uh, you know maybe a day ahead of time before uh, before planning the installation that we you go ahead and have those bits of information already signed up and approved and you're able to log in to, to both TailGuard and ElkLink, make sure there's no issues there. And uh, I mean, if you would like, you can, you can go ahead and configure the unit uh, ahead of time and then take it to the site. So certainly options there, but try to get that information ahead of time. Um, and what report format will the central station be receiving from the unit? Uh, it'd be contact ID. If you have multiple people that want to have remote access through the ElkLink app, um, do they all do that through like the same login, the same um, user code? Right, right. Yeah, it's it's one login per C1 M1. Uh, you, you can only have one username and password from the web portal and so forth. So you'd have to share that with multiple users if there was multiple devices. And that's one of the reasons why we recommend that you set up a separate user for ElkLink so that you're not associating the ElkLink um, remote capabilities through the web portal or the app with the particular um, person that's using the system, but rather that the, the app itself was used to do it. So that way you're not seeing that, you know, um, Joe is always the person who's disarming when it's actually being done from the app. Um, so you want to have that ElkLink user just to help um, clarify that in your log. Um, so, the question here is about a central station account number in order to set up and configure the C1M1. Um, each activation is going to require a unique identifier for the central station, which is, you know, similar to what you would see with other reporting formats. So, you're going to contact your central station and let them know that you're, you know, bringing on a, a, a a unit um, that's going to be going to their SureGuard IP receiver and get an account number for that. And it's important that you specify with the central station that it needs to be on their SureGuard receiver um, so that you don't uh, you know, run into issues with that not working because it's trying to go into the wrong device at the central station. You know, they receive reports from a lot of different uh, pieces of equipment and so they you know, have a lot of different things going on there. So just make sure that you, you clarify that. Um, this is just a general question, and Brad, maybe you can just kind of, you know, shed some light on some experience that you've had from the tech support point of view, but are there any, uh, you know, uh, gotchas or, um, you know, commonly used troubleshooting steps or, you know, if you do run into some kind of, uh, you know, issue when you get this activated, uh, say maybe it's not syncing or maybe it's not uh, communicating, some, some things to look for? Okay. Yeah, there's... Uh... There's information in the M1 that needs to be uh, set up ahead of time also. Uh, under globals, they're in RP, we want to make sure that the port speed is 115200. That's port speed for port zero. That's the onboard port for the M1. And then under globals G29342, the event 
zero port zero transmit options. All six of those need to be set uh, beforehand so that the, all that information is getting transmitted out the serial port so that the devices, whether it be you know, the, the iPhone app or the Droid app, they get updated and, and so forth. Uh, other than that, just um, you know, making sure that uh, you know, if you can connect with RP, and there's no port forwarding, so that's a good thing now, so we don't have to worry about the port forwarding uh, issues any longer. And, um, yeah. One thing that I've kind of run into a couple of times, and this is, uh, you know, so, uh, just depending on how you handle things with your installations and stuff, but um, sometimes we tend to get just a little ahead of ourselves, and, and, and that's a good thing in some aspects, but it can cause a problem here and there. Um, so, like, if you activate a C1M1 unit, and then you power it down, and it doesn't get an opportunity to sync with the Elk Link server um, after that activation, then that can lead to some, you know, interesting um, symptoms that you may run into. And um, so there's some different things that you can do to try to address that. Of course, power cycling the system is always a, a good idea. But um, if you pull the cover off of the C1M1 unit, there is a tamper switch um, there. And so if you press that tamper switch about 12 times, that kind of puts the unit into a, a reset. So it sort of reboots. And that can be helpful too. So that's a good little trick that uh, tends to get you out of trouble sometimes. All right, good point. Talk to us just a little bit about, um, you know, with it being a dual path device, it's able to report an outage of one pathway over the other pathway, and can you just give us a, a little information sure. about that, and, and you know, what, uh, what to expect there, and what the reaction should be if you do see a loss of pathway, one or the other? Okay. Right. Uh, like Amy mentioned earlier, it's primarily wanting to report signals over IP, but if for some reason the IP should go down, uh, internet should go down, then it's going to send a signal to your central station reporting that, and then central station should log that information. But the system just reported that to them, so one of the pathways is working. That's great peace of mind knowing that the system's there. It's monitoring both of them. If one of them should go down, and it'll report that to central station over the available pathway. So there's no more wondering about if the system's up and running. The system's monitoring for both. If one goes down, sends a signal letting Central Station know that uh, one pathway went down. But hey, guess what? I just sent you a signal over the remaining one. I'm up and running. Everything's fine. At which point, they, that, like I said, that should be a log-only kind of scenario, not necessary to contact the, the customer at 2 a.m. to let them know that uh, you know, the, the Internet's down because of service. Yeah, that can be um, just a, a really good heads up for you as the installer too to say, okay, well, uh, you know, one of the pathways went down. Um, you, that may be something that you just want to to keep an eye on. A lot of times it is just a matter of, you know, the internet service went down for a, a, a period of time and it's going to come back up on its own and there's nothing that really needs to be done about it. But, you know, it can alert you to, you know, maybe somebody turned something off or unplugged something and, you know, you, so if you monitor that through your Elk Link portal as far as what path it's going through, you can then see, okay, well, maybe you do need to contact that customer at a, you know, appropriate time and, and take a look at things. That is one of the nice things with the Elk Link portal is that you can see um, not only what pathway it last connected over, but it also lets you know the time so that you can really monitor and see that the units are, you know, up and running all the time. If you do run into, you know, one of those scenarios, you've got some diagnostic information that you can access without ever going on site. So um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the connectivity with Elk RP and, you know, as we kind of said, you know, it's, it kind of favors IP, but, you know, cellular is an option as far as reporting or, excuse me, programming the system in those cases where you really need it. Um, can you kind of let us know, you know, if that, that's something that you need on a particular unit, how do you go about uh, taking care of that and um, what are the, you know, rules um, for connectivity with RP over a cellular pathway? 
Okay, good question. Right, uh, primarily we would like to see everyone communicate, uh, connect with RP over the internet, but if for some reason uh, that's not possible, it is possible to connect over the cell network, but it's very limited, and, and that would be something we would have to uh, turn on for you. There's a, a form that would need to be filled out explaining why and the limitations and so forth. You could not do a full upload download, but if you did need to make a quick change to a zone or a user or something very minor, you can do it over the cellular network. But due to the data charges, it wouldn't support a full upload download from RP. Very, very minimal connection time. Okay, yeah, that, thank you for that. That's good information. And again, that's one of those scenarios where, um, you know, if you've got that special case, it's there for you, but it's not necessarily the primary intent of the, the product. So um, again, as data, uh, Brad stated, uh, data charges and whatnot are going to restrict how much uh, communication can be sent between the M1 and, and you know, your LCRP software over that cellular pathway. Okay, and uh, just uh, another question here just for some clarification. Um, Brad brought up the m one to go software um, and that that is really only for the m one XCP. I um, also wanted to clarify that the Elk Link app is only for C1 M1. That will not work with an M1 XCP. Um, so it is hardware specific with that free app. So with C1 M1 you get the free app, with M1 XCP you get the free Windows software. So is it possible to program um, email notifications through rules with a C1M1 like you do with an M1 XCP? Uh, no, no, that, that feature is only for the XCP where you can create rules. Uh, the C1M1, the push notifications is done by the end user on their portal, on their login, and it is for arm, disarm, and alarm. Right now that's the three messages that they could receive. And so in some cases that may be another differentiator for you as to, you know, which communicator to choose, especially if you're in one of those situations where you're really just looking for an IP communicator um, and you want to have that more customized email notification feature, then you may want to just go ahead and take a look at the M1 XCP. Um, but if you need IP and cellular, you want to have that backup and, you know, the arm disarm and alarm notifications are all you're really looking for, then C1M1 is going to be a great fit for you. These are some good questions today. Um, what is the upgrade path for replacing uh, C1M1 with an LTE version? If you have an existing unit, how would you go about doing that replacement? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I know there's two different steps involved anytime you have to replace a unit, whether it be that you, you know, you just want the LTE version or um, perhaps you've had the, you know, a misfortune of having, you know, something go wrong with the unit and you need to replace it. Um, you have to make sure that it's being taken out of both the Elk Link and the TailGuard sites or taken out may not be the best way to state that, but um, each one of those sites has a, uh, a, a replace top feature that's going to allow you to do that. Um, we'll provide some more clarification unless you have other information to add to that, Brad. No, we'll, we'll follow that up in the email. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of give you more of a step-by-step. -step. I'm pretty sure you would need to do the Elk Link first, but I may be wrong about that, so I'm just going to stop talking and let you know in the follow-up <laughs> what the real deal is there. Um, yep. Okay, um, so that seems to be the last of the questions that I have at the moment, although we do have a few more minutes here. If you do have questions, now's the time to ask them. 
um, we're going to definitely be getting you a follow-up email. You should see that either later today or tomorrow um, with the presentation. We'll get you those links that you need to things like the um, TelGuard account setup, ElkLink account setup, um, information about uh, this you know, last question that we weren't really able to fully answer, um, and just a summary of some of the other questions that were asked so that you have that as a reference. Um, so if there are no more questions at this time, we will go ahead and conclude the webinar here. Um, we really appreciate your time and uh, thank you for joining us. And um, Brad, if you could uh, click on over a slide or two, I think it will show some of our contact information. Um, so if you need to get in touch with us, um, you can certainly do that. Uh, email tech support at elkproducts.com or training at elkproducts.com. Um, we are on social media and would love to have you join us there. Um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and we've got some great information on our YouTube channel um, about C1M1 and also about the M1 products in general. Um, so definitely check that out. I hope you have a great rest of your week and uh, thanks again. <laughs>